Hello, welcome to Fireside Chats. I am Magla Pele, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you today Sister Denise, who has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over four decades. Today's topic is Sins and Past Regrets. This series aims to look at the core of spirituality. We ask that you look into your heart and your mind and see whether there is a balance between your inner and outer world. The series also focuses on philosophical as well as spiritual integrity. It also looks at you, the viewer, and your relationship with God, whomsoever you believe Him to be, and whether you are happy with your relationship with God, whether you find your relationship with the Divine fulfilling and a balanced one. Sister Denise, very, very warm welcome to today's show. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Tell me, um, sins and past regrets, um, every single human being um, has uh, erred and every single human being has regrets, um, whether it be an act of commission or an act of omission. How do we restore um, our own inner balance and how do we atone for uh, that which we have done wrong in the past? It's quite a thing to go into silence and find that your conscience brings up something that you thought that you had taken care of a long time ago and you find, no, it's still there, you haven't taken care of it. What do you have to do to take care of it? I think one very important thing is to admit it. And one of the practices that we do in the Raj Yoga of Brahma Kumaris is somewhere towards the beginning of your spiritual practice, if you really want to take it to a good level, then it would be suggested that you should write your life story. And your life story means from the beginning of your life, as far back as you can remember, write down all the things that are on your conscience. And I feel that it's not just only things you have done that you shouldn't have done, or things that you should have done that you haven't done, the sins of omission and commission, but I think it's also very good to write down those things that were done against you by other people, because when you take the sorrow of that, that also functions as a sin on your part, just the act of taking that in. A lot of times people don't, don't know this at all. Now, when you write your story, then it's there. It could be a long one or a short one, whatever. But your story is something that was inside. Having written it, it's then outside. It's on a piece of paper in black and white. And you can always go back to it and add to it and amplify it or whatever. Sometimes people like to write it on computers so that you can make adjustments later on. And it, it acts like a mirror reflecting back to you. And then you can also categorize it into those things that you um, can and the things that you wish to uh, make amends for. Um, it sometimes happens that the people that you have wronged have died, so you can't make amends. But wherever you can make amends, it's a very good thing. But before making amends, you have to admit that, yes, I did this, uh, I know it was wrong, and um, this is what I'm going to do, and just work out with that person what it's going to take to, um, to come back to zero in your account with that person. Um, sometimes you just are not willing to do that. And the reason why people are so unwilling to apologize is because it involves losing face. Especially in Asian cul cultures, losing face is the worst thing that can happen to you. Uh, and uh, you would rather die than lose face. And what this does is it prevents people from coming clean and making an apology. I think in the Western culture it's a lot easier because losing face is not such a big deal, which means that um, 
people in that culture are uh, in a better position to free themselves up from the stuff that's on their conscience. Uh, when you, you are unwilling to lose face, then what you have to do is go into denial. Or you have to go into some kind of justification where you can explain to yourself how this wrong thing that you did is somehow not wrong. But it is wrong. And so you actually can't get free from it. This type of exercise is really good because it's a beautiful way to make yourself honest with yourself. Because becoming honest with yourself means that you can then be honest with God. And you see, you can place yourself and all of your story in front of God and say, okay, this is it. This is me. Here you are. And what happens with that is uh, the wonder of God is that, okay, it's like God will say, all right, 50% is finished. So then the burden of the negative uh, karma, the burden of the sin is lifted. And you see, one of the things that we're also talking about today is the regret. If you confess, you write, you give it to God, then God will say, well, in that case, don't take it back. Taking it back is where you think over it again, you feel bad about it again, and God will say, no, you know, you gave it to me already, so you no longer have the right to revisit it, because it's gone now, it's not yours, you've given it away. And this process of going back there and chewing on it and mea culpa and all of this, that is actually harmful. So one has to be quite uh, strict with the self and say, okay, I've given it to God, it's over, gone. And of course it will try to come back and you have to keep on saying to it, well, you've been given to God, so you go there. Don't come to see me. The remaining 50% that has to be dealt with by yoga. So how you deal with it by yoga is quite interesting. In your mind, this um, past bad thing that you did will arise and to plague you, to disturb you and distress you. And what you have to do is turn your mind away from that and towards God because then that thing cannot eat your mind. You know, there's this expression, eating your mind. When you do that, then the thought which is coming from your subconscious this is your demons, you know. You're turning your attention to God. Those demons turn into little tadpoles and finally disappear. And this is how you finish your sins through the power of yoga. Mm. Mr. Denise, where does forgiveness fit into this picture? To me, the word forgiveness is complicated. Uh, on the one hand, it is a concept of Christianity, uh, which has its own meaning within that religion. I prefer to go with the word letting go, uh, because what you have to do is let go. What your mind what? wants to do is hold on. What do you let go of? Uh, you let go of the feeling, you let go of the regret, you let go of uh, all of the negativity that is um, pulled up whenever your mind goes to that situation or that memory. So if somebody has done something against you, um, you have to be able to process it until you arrive at an attitude of neutrality towards that person and that thing. That means you don't feel revenge or um, you don't want to get your own back. You're not trying to get justice. Um, you finish and you let go. Um, you're not trying to get justice. Is there something wrong with wanting justice? and or retribution? Is that a sin? I think that you need to, and it's one of the laws of spirituality, practical laws, 
if somebody has done a crime against you and it goes through due process through the court system, then you have to let go of your desire for any additional retribution or justice or whatever. You have to accept the judgment of the court. And if you can't let go, um, you are doing a sin. Mm. Now, of course, it can be that um, you have good reason and there are sometimes uh, situations where the justice system doesn't render justice and there you will you may pursue it but I mean there are many situations where you can go as far as it can be gone but you don't let go of it because you are hungry for more um, more retribution, more punishment, something like this. And, and there I think, uh, I, I think that uh, you cross a line and, uh, and they start to go into sin by wanting to do that. Mm. Okay. So, Sister Denise, the law of karma obviously comes into play here. Mm. Okay. Now, um, how do you work with the law of karma so that you can use the law to work for you rather than just wait for punishment to emerge from past sins? Well, when you are studying the law of karma, you're all the time looking at yourself in terms of the quality of your karma. You're thinking, you're assessing on a continuous basis, you know, what is the quality of my, my thought, my words, my actions, as you go through the day and um, you're also refining your conscience so that as and when you do something even slightly against your personal ethical policy it'll immediately throw up a red flag and say oops mm. you're a hypocrite or you did something that you said you don't do and da 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 okay is it Denise? One can create a negative. Um, one can create negative karma through something that you do or, or not do. Okay, then you can create negative karma through something that you say right? or or you write. Okay, and can you create negative karma just through your thoughts? Yes, you certainly can. So if I have a thought that um, this one should burn in hell. Is it, am I creating, is it a sin? Yep. So that comes back, it goes into my account of negativity? What happens is that person will feel it and your relationship with that person will be spoiled because they will know that you feel that way and they will also respond to that so that there'll be some problem in the mind space between you and that person which will take the form of a mental sin. Okay, so um, punishment, uh, which is, uh, takes the form of any form of suffering, is one way in which we settle uh, our accounts. Um, what are the ways that we don't know about, that we settle? Well, the law of karma is very um, complex, mathematical, and a question of calculation. So, you know, in some religions it speaks about an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and all of this. So, in terms of the laws of karma, the kind of uh, negative experience you will receive from something is exactly proportionate to what it is you did. And so, because of that, you are able, theoretically, to calculate, oh, if this is happening, then this is what I must have done something along these lines. Some of it is very difficult to calculate because it's very subtle, it's very complicated. Some of it is very obvious. In the same way, um, the law of karma as it relates to pure karma, to charity, to good works, um, you can exactly see that whatever is your circumstance, your fortune, is a result of very specific charity that you must have done. So you can come to understand yourself in terms of the patterns of your karma 
by looking at your personal situation, your relationships, your quality of health, all of these things will tell a story about you in terms of your past karma and there'll also be a trend going on so that you can understand where you're headed in the future. More you know about the law of karma now, every moment that comes into your hand, every thought, possibility, every word, every action, because you know you are able to calculate the best possible future and you can deviate the trend by seeing clearly the sanskaras, that is the trend of negative action that is there within you. And you, when you're doing spiritual work, you're actually bending that sanskara to a direction of your choice, which means you're also altering the course of your life and creating a different future from the one that you would otherwise end up in if you didn't do anything. Sister Denise, um, is a human being's life just a series of waiting for all your debts, your past sins, of which you have no memory to come attack you? Um, because it's um, um, payback is a very difficult thing to bear and you never know what's lurking, do you? So um, how is there any way of protecting yourself currently from sins of the past? I think what we try to do, those of us who really want to understand this process, is to use the time that you have in the best possible way. So make sure that your mind is occupied with the purest, powerfulest, and most interesting thoughts that you can come up with, and don't allow yourself to engage in garbage thoughts, waste of time thoughts, ordinary thoughts, you know. It's a discipline. Engage in meaningful words that you speak, that you write, that you read, you know. Try to do karma which is charitable, beneficial, and also try to do good yoga. So that means that you're creating, you know, planting good seeds for good results, and you're also finishing off anything that may be um, something that you can't decipher from the past, and creating very pure energy around yourself. I think that's a good, um, a good insurance policy. What role does God play in the um, alleviation of one's debts? That's the first question I have. And secondly, is there any way that w anything that we can do right here and now to offset the debts of the past that doesn't involve punishment um, instead of just waiting for it to come? Like, can you do something now physically to, to put it that which you've done in the past right? And well, let's go with your first question first, otherwise okay. it's going to get lost. <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, God. <laughs> so, um, the important thing uh, about God is God will inform you very clearly about what the laws are. This is God in the role of teacher, teaching you the laws of karma, the laws of spirituality, so that you are not ignorant. And that means you, you know everything you have to know, and then you can do whatever it is that you choose to do to create the very best future that you can. Um, when you refer to God in your decision-making processes, that's a very interesting activity because um, you process the ideas and then you send your mind to God for something like um, verification or another opinion, something like this, and very often you can get a response which makes you do something maybe a little bit more refined than otherwise. In terms of your second question of um, what we can do to alleviate, it's really the remembrance of God which causes the, the karmic debt to get settled through that turning of the mind 
towards God and especially when the debt comes up for settlement, you shift your mind towards God. Sometimes also it can be uh, in the form of some illness, some pain, physical pain, any kind of pain. You turn your mind towards God, you link yourself to God, and that the power of that activity causes that karma to be finished. But that's a pretty high level of uh, mm. meditation. What can I, apart from connecting with God, what can one do to uh, offset the debt that you're carrying on your shoulders, your invisible though heavy debt which may rear its ugly head at any given point in time? Can Part you of it is to do um, pure karma. And see. what is your definition of pure karma? Anything that comes from what we call soul consciousness, anything that comes out of peace, out of love, out of purity, uh, out of the desire to benefit others, uh, anything which involves connecting another soul to God, um, enabling another human being to have a qualitatively better life, all of that counts as pure karma. And every time you do some kind of act of charity that goes into your bank balance so when your debts come up you have more to pay them with. Okay, so Sister Denise, um, the next concern is how not to create any further um, accounts that will come back and bite you. So apart from being um, soul conscious and um, connecting with God, okay, um, how does one then tread so carefully that uh, you're not increasing your debt, but you're lessening it. Because that, happens, that's, that's also a concern, isn't it? Yes. Now that you're spiritually aware. What happens is a debt will come in the form of something goes wrong between yourself and another person. They do something wrong, um, victimize you, something. Your immediate normal reaction is... What they did was wrong, I'm going to get even, something like this. What you need to do is to apply, in a sense, the uh, sensitivity of your third eye to the situation to see this is happening in um, and taking the form of a payment that I owe to that person. And if you discern that, then what you have to do is pay up and not add to the debt by doing, you know, giving as good as you got. So in that case, forbearance is a very important quality. How do you find that for us? Forbearance is that you don't react, that you don't um, try to give as good as you got, but you, you let go, you understand, okay, I'm paying karma here, and you do nothing. Let it go. Doing nothing is a way of handling a debt? Yes, it is, because um, you're paying through the pain that you got, and you, doing nothing means that you're not um, setting up a new karmic debt, you see, because if you react to that by doing something out of anger or whatever, then you're not just paying you're also setting up a new debt which you will have to pay later on. So why would you bother to do that when you can just pay? Mm. And it's over. Mm. So a lot of relationships between people at this present historical time are all about settling debts. So the ability to operate with forbearance when you detect that this is a debt going on is a very, very great advantage because then your debts are getting less. They're not just, you know, paying and then starting a new cycle of debt. Mm. Okay. Okay, unfortunately, we have to say thank you and goodbye to you right now because that's what we have time for. Uh, the subject is very deep and perhaps you and I should take it up again because I think we just covered the surface of the understanding of the law of karma from the perspective of sins and past regrets. So thank you. So there you have it brothers and sisters. What does it mean to have 
um, the understanding of the law of karma in settling one's sins and also past to regrets. Uh, Sister Denise was very candid and clear as to the fact that all of us have a karmic debt on our shoulders, whether you see it or not. And the fact that you cannot see it or even feel it does not mean that it's not there. She shared some very clear and concise methodology that we can employ in order to offset our past sins, uh, which includes, I think, primarily establishing a clear and powerful relationship with God because He's the only one that could um, actually help one to clean one's slate. So I wish to thank Sister Denise for her words of wisdom, and I hope you've benefited from today's talk. Thank you, and goodbye.